So now our sample is inside the bomb and the bomb is sealed nice and tight. We also want to make sure that this pressure release valve is also closed. Um, at this point we need to add the oxygen and the oxygen comes from a tank across the table here but this is the inlet valve and it fits actually on this part right here. It only goes on one way. There's nothing to thread. It just pops on like so. But it'll be um, the instructor that will fill this from the oxygen tank for you and will charge it with 20 atmospheres of oxygen. When that's full, they'll clear the line. It'll make a little noise to clear the line so that we can actually pop that off the top. And then uh, we'll use our tweezers see that little hole on the side so these are not tweezers but tongs that are special tongs just for the bomb and we'll lift that up the bomb is going to sit inside this bucket and this bucket should already be filled with exactly two liters of distilled water using your volumetric flask that's provided if we look inside here you see the three little bumps at the bottom so if this is already out, you see where those three bumps correspond to the three bumps on the calorimeter itself. And that's just to make sure that this is sitting properly. And then we'll place the bomb in. So we we'll grab the bomb and we're going to make it sit right there on that circle. And do it very carefully, maybe a little more careful than I did. Before you actually descend it into the two liters of water that would be in here, you would have um, inserted the fuse wires, the connectors, and they go like so and like so. So mine's not full of water right now and I would be working below the water level if there was water in it. So make sure before you actually descend it all the way down to the bottom of the bucket, you actually put your leads in place. Then we're ready to put the lid on. So the lid also sits in its own stand to protect the thermometer from breaking. We'll lift it out of its stand and bring it over. And it will go on only one way. And that's good, and you'll just secure this. I'm trying to do it with one hand here. There we go. Turn the switch to the right to turn it on, and that'll stir the water and bring the contents before reacting to thermal equilibrium. And you'll have to read the temperature using this little telescope glass on the thermometer. And if it's not in focus, you can focus by pulling that out and, pu and pushing it in. So try not to remove your goggles to actually see that. You'll collect temperatures during this pre-period that will be stable. And when it's time to fire the bomb, um, you will do so by pressing this button on the fuse box. I won't do it now, but when you press it, this light will come on to show that it fired. And within a couple of seconds, you should be able to register a temperature increase. It's not great because this is measuring the temperature of two liters of water, and because of the high capacity, heat capacity of water, um, yeah, the temperature doesn't rise very much, but it will rise. Make sure this is hard to see, and you don't want to be looking for it when you know that it's changing. So make sure during that pre period, you have a really good grip on where that mercury is so that you can track it as it increases in temperature and then finally settles out for the post period. At the end of it all, turn it the same way to turn it off and dismantle so you would take this off, the little um, rubber band, uh, lift up the lid, put the lid back onto its holder, lift out the bomb but you can reach in and get it with your hands now because uh, you're not worried about the water spilling. Take the bomb out and when you take the bomb out you're going to open that pressure release valve very carefully and let the exhaust gases or the gases exhaust and then we'll come back over to our sample preparation table after everything is cleaned and you'll make your sample. Remember that first run was with benzoic acid. 
That data will be used to calculate the calorimeter constant. And once you're done with your standard, you'll actually now find the calorie content or energy content in our dried banana chips here. So you'll take a few of those and put it in the grinder enough so that this thing actually turns and works. Okay, so you'll probably grind more than you need. Um, if you grind it too much, you'll turn it to a paste or a butter. And remember, you just want to put it to a powder so that it compacts nicely in the press. And if that press gets dirty, you need to wipe it out with a Kim wipe. Make sure that's nice and clean and dry. And please unplug before you reach in and clean or remove the contents of this. Any other questions you can save for your TA. So have a fun but safe time with the um, calorimeter.